In this video, we're going to take a look at how to add user authorization and fine grain access control to an AppSync application. The demo project that we're going to start with is a cloned repo. It's under my GitHub repo, dabbit3 slash AppSync React Native with user authorization. This is going to allow us to set up a React Native project with AWS Mobile using Cognito to sign in and sign up users. The actual logic that's going on in AppSync, though, can be configured with any um, authorization provider. So if this doesn't work with kind of your existing setup, it's okay because the examples and the logic that we're going to be using in AppSync will actually work with any authorization provider. We're just doing this so if anyone wants to kind of get up and running and on an intent app, they do have somewhere to start. So if you'd like to follow along, you can clone this repo npm install or yarn install your dependencies and then we're going to go down here to set up the aws mobile project if you don't already have the cli installed you'll need to install that um, all of the directions are on the repo and then you'll run aws mobile configure i'm going to though start with aws mobile init since i already have the cli uh, installed and configured so i'll go to my terminal i'll go ahead and run aws mobile init I'll answer the defaults to the first four questions. And for the name of the project, I'll call this AppSync Auth Project. So this has created a new AWS mobile project. It's added a couple of things already, like analytics and S3. But we do now need to add user sign-in. So I'm going to go ahead and run AWS mobile user sign-in enable and then AWS Mobile push. All right, we should be able to go into our AWS console and we'll go to Mobile Hub. And from there, we'll see this new AppSync auth project. And now that we have that set up, we see that we have user sign-in enabled. And that's exactly right, because that's what we'd like to do, because now when we add our AppSync project, we need to associate this user sign-in configuration that we have through Amazon Cognito to kind of correlate with our existing project in, or the new project actually in AppSync. So I'll go to AWS console and I'll open up AppSync. And from here we want to create a new API. I'll call this Cities with Cognito off and I'll use a custom schema. So what we're going to do is we're going to create an API that allows us to create a city and retrieve this list of cities. Upon the creation of a new city, we'd like to associate the currently logged in user with that city. So when we retrieve the list of cities, we only get the data for the user who is currently logged in. So the first thing we need to do is change the auth mode from API key and we're going to change that to Amazon Cognito user pool. And we do that by clicking, we do that by clicking on settings on the left-hand menu. For the AWS region, I'm going to choose US East 1 because that is the region in which I created my AWS mobile project just a moment ago. For the user pool, I'll choose AppSync Auth Proj to correlate with the project I created again a few minutes ago. And the default action is going to be allow. And for everything else, I'm just going to go ahead and click save. So now we want to go ahead and create our schema. So for the schema, I'm going to give it a type of city with the name, country, and an ID. And I'll give a query of fetch city. And this is going to return a city. So now that our basic schema is created, I'm going to go ahead and click on Create Resources, City. I'm going to leave everything the default, and I'm going to go ahead and choose Create. All right, now that our data sources are created, let's go back to our main API configuration, scroll down, and click on React Native. We're going to download the AWS AppSync.js file real quick. Copy the contents of that. I'll create a new file within the root directory called appsync.js, and I'll paste the contents there. 
Now I'm going to go to app.js and we're going to set the client to use the Amazon Cognito user pools auth type. So I'm going to comment out this previous client code and I'm going to uncomment this. So here we're setting the auth object as the type of Amazon Cognito user pools and the JWT token is now going to come from our auth.current session. So when the user logs in, we actually have that data and we persist it and we have it ready to go whenever we make an API call. So now that that's set up, let's go ahead and run the project and see if we can get this working. So I'm just going to run npm start. And then I'm going to run, run iOS. And that's React Native run iOS. I just have it uh, shorthanded or alias. Okay, now that the project's running, let's take a quick look at what we have going on here. We have a basic sign in and sign up form. So let's try this out. I'm going to go ahead and sign up a new user. This has multi-factor authentication, so I got an authorization code, so I'll go ahead and type that in here. All right, so now that I've signed up, I'll go ahead and try to sign in. And this also is multi-factor auth. So I'll get the second authorization code. And it looks like we're in. So we have a couple of different things going on here. We have cities, which is going to be listing our list of cities. We have add city, where we can add a new city. And then we have profile. So let's take a look again now at our mobile hub project. And specifically, we want to look at Cognito. So the way that we can do that is we can go to resources and we can click on the Cognito user pool. And if we click on users and groups, we should see our new user. And the username for me is dabit3. And this is going to be important because when we create a new item in our AppSync API, we want to use this username as our identifier. So now let's jump back into the AWS AppSync console and we'll go to, I guess, data sources and we'll click on the city table. And I'm going to click on items and for right now we don't really have any items. So I'm going to create a new city by clicking on add city. And now I'm going to refresh the DynamoDB and we see that we have our new city there. So everything is kind of wired up and working the way that we would like it. What we would like to do now though is add our fine grain access control and, and authorization, right? So now that we have everything uh, ready to go and working, maybe we want a new identifier on our table that defines the current user that's logged in and we want to reference an item as correlating to that user whenever it's created. So the way that we would do that is we'll go back into AppSync, we'll click on Schema, and on the right-hand side under Data Types, we're going to update the resolver for the Create City mutation. So I'm going to click on Create City, and in this mapping template, we're going to change some things up. So the first thing we want to do is, I'm just going to go ahead and go to the top and create a blank space. The main values that we're going to be working with in the database are these attribute values. So we would like to add an identifier for the current user username in the, into the attribute values. And the way that we're going to do that is I'm going to create a new map or a new object called attributes. And then from there, we're going to add the user current username to that attributes object as opposed to just sending the current attributes, which are country, name, and ID. And the way that we'll do that, we'll say set and we'll set this equal to the context.arguments.input. So 
So we have that basic input. The thing we'd like to work with now is the identity object. So we have context.args, but we also have context.identity. And we're going to use the identity.username to identify the user. So we're just going to say set. And we'll set a new value called author equal to the context.identity.username. And then now instead of setting the attribute values here like this, what we'll do is we'll call util.toJSON and we'll just pass in that attributes. And we'll save that. And we'll go back here and we'll create a new city. I'll refresh our DynamoDB table. And now we see we have a new user that's created with the author of Dabit3. So now that we have our data set up to create a new item, or we have our database, I guess you would say, and our resolver set up to create a new item and identify the author, we would like to now be able to query our database based on that, that user. And the way that we can do that is we can add an index so we'll click on index in the table and we'll click create index. And the partition key is going to be the author ID that we are going to be referencing, or the author name. So under uh, indexes, we'll click create index. I'll call this author. And the index name is going to be author index. And I'll just set the read and write capacity to, to one for now since we're just testing. And I'll do create index. And now that our index is created, we'll jump back to AppSync and we'll scroll down to the list cities resolver down here under query list cities city table. And we'll update this request mapping template to be a query. We'll set a new query property. And we'll also set an index property. And for the index, we'll pass in the author index. And for the query, we'll set two properties. The first is going to be the expression. And the second is going to be the expression values. And we'll set the expression values key as author and the value to S stands for string and we'll pass in the identity again. So here we'll just say context.identity.username. The same username context identity value we used when we created a new city. From there, we'll just go ahead and click Save. So now we'll go back to Cities. And this uh, should be where we're kind of listing the cities that are created in DynamoDB. So if we go to our items, we now we have uh, Tokyo and Amsterdam. But theoretically, when we create this query now, we should only get uh, Tokyo because the person that's logged in is me and that user is Dabit3 and they should only be allowed to access you know, the, the current item from which they created and looks like it's working fine. So let's add a new city. Go to cities, refresh. We see that it's working. I'll create a new item manually. I'll just set my name there. save and I manually created Chicago so we go ahead and refresh and we see that Chicago is there 
let me refresh my DynamoDB console because I no longer see San Francisco. Okay, good, it's still there. Um, so now let's change the identity of one of these. So I'll change this to like Davit33, save, refresh. Chicago is no longer showing up, which is great. So it means all of this stuff is working. And you'll notice the cool thing is we didn't really change any client code other than our AppSync configuration here. Everything else is done on our mapping template. So we changed a couple of things to recognize the user using context.identity, and everything was kind of just set up from on the back end side. So that's kind of how to do some really basic user authentication, authorization, and fine grained access control using AppSync. There's quite a bit on the documentation, so if you go to the AppSync documentation, there is a section, and we'll take a quick look at it. And we'll go to Resources, Developer Guide, and from here, we'll click on Security. There's a lot of information about kind of some of the stuff we've just done, but maybe in a little more depth, so if you have any more specific use cases, you should be able to find some information there. And then under authorization use cases, there are some examples of how to do different things with the identity. So the identity, let's take a quick look at that. We've only used the username, but the identity property actually has a few different other available properties. So let's take a look at what that looks like. Yeah, here we go. So the identity object has a few different things like Cognito Identity Pool ID, Cognity, Cognito Identity ID, Source IP, Caller, Username, and User ARN. So the username is kind of what I'm using, but if you need any other information, there's a few different properties available on the identity object. So that's it. That's kind of a very basic example of how to set up fine-grained access control and authorization using AWS AppSync.